Hi everyone, today I'm talking about the capacité P median. This is slightly different than the P median as we're going to see through an example and we're going to talk about its mechanism as well as its formulation. First let's look at the P median and its assumption. So the P median here, if I have a set of demand nodes right here with the population attached to it, right? Um, and I have a certain number of facilities that I can open. We're going to take the example, I can open two facilities here. The objective of the P-median, if you remember, is essentially, <clears throat> besides the location, is to then allocate the demand in a way that the total travel distance weighted right, by the demand is minimized. So in this particular case here, if we decide to open both facilities, the color code them in purple, briefly here, that means they're both open. In that case, what we would do, we would then assign right, every demand node to its closest open facility. As long as that facility is open, remember. And so then it's essentially a matter of seeing what is the closest. Those are effectively called spider line or assignment line if you want or allocation line. Okay? That is pretty straightforward. We have also seen that if we were not using the Euclidean metric, sometimes some nodes could be uh, assigned to facilities that look that they are not the closest, but in fact they are because we may use the road network. The next step we want to do is then to look at the capacity, because so far I have assumed that the capacity of both of these schools uh, is unlimited. And if we <coughs> sum up the amount of uh, demand that has been assigned to this both facilities. I'm going to start with an easy one here. We see that, so let's call this one B. We see that for B the total is 450. I'll put it here. That has been assigned, 450. Okay. And then for the other one, let's call it A here. Okay. We're seeing that there is 350, 650. Uh, we are now at 900, 1000, 1350. 1,850. Clearly we can see that there is an imbalance uh, of uh, allocation here between both facilities. Now it could be that these facilities can handle more demand than uh, others. That's absolutely possible. Some could simply be larger. Okay, And think a little bit about the example of schools. Okay, So now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to limit this capacity and then see how this uh, demand uh, allocation actually change. Now, in the next example, we are actually going to use the capacity of a facility and we're going to see how the travel allocation may change or the assignment may change. So, I just calculated here the total demand. Okay, it's 2,300. But now I've received a little bit more information and I know the facility here has what we call an upper capacity, right? So for B, we're going to say, uh, where is B? Here is 1,300 and for A, it is 1,000. So the next question will be then, how can I allocate this demand to the facilities without exceeding the capacity that they can handle? And this is what we're going to do right in this exercise. Using the information here, we're going to allocate the flow. So let's look at um, A first, it's kind of easier. We know that the total capacity of A is 1000. So what does it mean? So if I look here, you know, I can start looking, if I put 500 here, it leaves me with 500. What can I put here? I took the example actually pretty uh, straightforward. Um, we will see here by just looking a little bit that this demand node can be assigned to A, this one, that's a dollar of 550, this one, this will be now 650, and if I add this one, it will be just a thousand. And that means that all of the others can be assigned to B without exceeding the capacity. Okay? Okay. So that solution does not change a whole lot compared to the previous one. Okay? Maybe a slight little bit because 500 was assigned there, I believe. What if we were to change these numbers, right? What if they are different? Um, how would then the allocation change? That's the next example. Okay, 
I've changed the rule of the game a little bit. Uh, now I have assigned a total capacity for B of 1000 and for A of 1300. What I'm going to write, or I guess try to um, optimize here on the blackboard, may not be the optimal solution. This is something, I, I, an idea that I have, right? Uh, of course, you would have to run this through some optimizer uh, to find the exact solution. But uh, we could think, for instance, here for a second, right? And say, okay, well, let's look here at B. Um, I could assign, you know, sort of all the demand here that I have nearby, right? So in this case, that would be, okay, let's put the 350 here for sure. Okay, let's put the 200 here for sure. Okay, let's put the other 200, right? And we can check, I mean, are we in balance, yes or no? So this is 200 and 200, right, 400, 400 and um, 350, we are now at uh, 7, uh, 750. Okay, so maybe it's not really good, so let's try maybe something different. Um, let's sort of remove this one here. Just give me one second. Let's remove this one here, um, and then let's maybe add the 500 right here. Okay, that's already better. I'm at 900 now, so I'm getting closer to the capacity. I say, okay, well, what? Then I sign the 50 here. I could, but then that creates a problem because if I add the 50, I need to find another 50 from here, and where would it come from? So one way we could do is say, okay, well, I'm just missing 100. Right? Let's just put it here. So think about like a student capacity problem, right? uh, or school location problem. And so then, that would be the flow for that one facility. And then for the other one, that would, of course, in that case, uh, have all the remaining one right here. I'll put them maybe in white, a bit easier to see. Right, and this would be in J. And this one. And that would be in check. We can count 350 and 300, 650, 650. Uh, uh, 250, uh, so we have 900, 900 and uh, 350, we are 1250 uh, plus 50, that's 1300. What we see here in this solution, we see two interesting patterns. This 50 here, this group is sent here, so not the closest, and here as well we see this 100 sent here to be not the closest. That is typical of capacitative problem, um, that we have this sort of non-closest assignments, um, and this is something that we can try to accommodate to some degree, but not always possible. Now we're going to spend time looking at the formulation. As promised, I'm not talking about the formulation of this capacitated P-median. Now, based on the example that we have seen, we introduce essentially a new um, parameters here, or coefficient if you want, which is Z plus J. And that is the maximum capacity a facility can absorb. Um, <clears throat> so, for instance, um, in the case of a school, uh, it may be able to function up to a certain capacity. It's possible to add a little bit of what we call soft capacity, right? Trailers, for instance, that can be added. Um, but then you can also have a minimum capacity below which the facility is not considered efficient or maybe there are not enough customers, or maybe there are not enough students in the case of schools and so on. And you don't want to operate at a lower capacity than that threshold. The one you will see the most, of course, is the um, upper or maximum capacity. So our formulation essentially remains the same. So that's the minimization of the travel demand to the facilities. We also say that uh, each demand node must be equal to one. Uh, so it must be assigned to a facility. A demand node can be assigned to a facility only if that facility, of course, exists. The number of facilities that can be open in the system should be less or equal to P, or you can also put equal to P as you, as you prefer. P is dictated by the budget at hand. And then we have these two new constraints here in uh, yellow-green, um, where we're saying here that the total demand, right, um, <coughs> sum over all the I's, um, should be less or equal to the upper capacity and this we're going to do for each uh, facility uh, and then here you also have the minimum capacity here that says that the total demand uh, that originates uh, from all the eyes right should be uh, greater or equal to the uh, minimum capacity and then at the end you have this uh, integer constraint that we have seen uh, before so 
the addition of even the, that one constraint makes the problem much more difficult and can lead to those situations, as I had mentioned earlier, where we have demand that is not allocated to the closest facility. Now, if I have a chance, I will uh, demonstrate this within the uh, GIS environment or maybe within uh, the uh, CPLEX uh, optimizer. Okay, I'd like to show you briefly the um, setup of the problem within the geographic information system here. I've tried to reproduce here the problem that I had on the blackboard with two facilities uh, and nine demand nodes. Um, the proportional symbol is used to denote, to denote the population and happy to change that to its exact value here. So you can see, All right? So these are the same values that we had on the blackboard but I'm going to go back and put it to their ID number as opposed to this here. Okay, so um, in order to um, compute this uh, capacity DP median, first step here is to write a Python code that would read the demand node, that would read the facilities and additional information on capacity and so on. Um, and then essentially uh, generate a p median, a capacitated p median problem that can be solved within CPLEX. The last thing I want to point out before opening this Python code here is that the, the facilities also have a capacity, uh, upper capacity. So let's go into the, uh, the Python code here. Okay, so uh, that's a Python code that was actually written a while ago for uh, school location problems. Uh, it used the ArcPy module. Um, and also define of a distance function in the beginning. Uh, it uses uh, input as demand and facilities. Um, from there, uh, the population, which is the weight, uh, this a sub i is calculated at here. Uh, we have the destination information here. Uh, the capacity is also uh, taken into account. Uh, and then the distance between the origin to the uh, facilities is uh, estimated here. Um, next step is to generate the LP file. Um, which here we're trying to minimize the total weighted travel from each uh, demand node to the facility, uh, subject to a few constraints. Uh, the first one says that uh, if there is a allocation from a demand node to a facility, then that facility, of course, uh, should be uh, ex should exist. Um, that every demand node must be served. Uh, and then that the sum of the demand going to a facility, right, uh, here you have um, <coughs> a sum here, um, should then um, be um, uh, less or equal than the total capacity uh, of uh, the facility. We can only open uh, P facilities that's uh, tracked here, and then we have a few um, integer constraints here as well. So we can run this one, okay, that's what we're going to do here in Python. Um, yeah, so the only disadvantage here of using the uh, ArcPy module uh, is that it takes time because it um, just has to load the associated function. Once it's done, you can see the different steps as I print them out. Um, and then we can uh, navigate to our, our directory and look at the uh, file. So we have a minimization problem. I'll make this a little bit bigger. Up. All right, so 28. Okay, we have a minimization problem, right? Uh, X i to a, X one sorry to b, and so on and so forth. This is the first uh, constraint that a demand node is uh, allocated to a facility if that facility actually is open. Um, that for each demand node we need to have one allocation, uh, and this here is about the. Uh, capacity of uh, facility A and capacity of facility B minus all the flow that goes there should be less or equal to their uh, maximum capacity. Two facilities can be open at most. We can, of course, change that uh, and so on and so forth. Okay, so then, you know, easy to solve this within the CPLEX environment. So I'm going to go, um, so I'm going to do here read. I'm going to carry this file over. It's an LP file that I'm going to optimize, right? So I have here the solution. Um, and then one thing we may want to do is to write solutions. So um, this is a bit different than what we did before. We used to display, now we can actually write the solution out. Um, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to 
try to use the exact same uh, directory, but I'm going to change here the here to call it sol, so SOLS. And what we want to write are actually the solutions. Um, so that's SOL. And then because the file already exists, yes, we're going to overwrite it. And then we can look, you know, here, let's just refresh this window. We can look at the solution here. Uh, this is typical for um, CPLEX, a bunch of um, information I hear about the way, I mean, the methods that were used, um, and then um, you have here, which is uh, quite relevant, of course, is uh, which variables are equal to one and which one are equal to zero, um, and which facilities are open. In our case, only you know, there were two facilities and we want to open both, so that's not very complicated. Um, so I think that's kind of uh, sums it up. Now, but based on this, then we can uh, create spider lines. So I'm going to skip this part here. Um, I mean, I'm going to show you the results, but I will skip the uh, code here for that matter and uh, just show you the results right away. Um, this would be the allocation. Um, so for instance, you have one to A is equal to one. So go back here and you have one A is equal to one. The next one would be uh, 2a equal to 1, so we'll go back here, you know, 2a equal to 1, and so on and so forth, right? And we can check um, that the total demand here that is um, allocated to a does not exceed the capacity. So one way, um, you know, I could check is um, maybe I could select out, okay, those guys here, as well as this one, as well as this one, and then we can see here if those numbers when I do the statistics, are less than 1,300, and they are less or equal, actually, to 1,300. Uh, and then the same for B, I think they should be not more than 1,000. So that sort of um, summarizes, you know, the capacitated P-median. Um, not too many problems here, uh, of course. Uh, would be interesting to change this capacity and see if the flow would actually change uh, or not. Uh, but hopefully that has been uh, useful. Uh, to better understand that particular uh, model. Thank you.